Welcome to a new edition of the Famous Interviews with Joe Domino. On this episode, we talk with author, psychic medium, advisor, educator, and speaker, Michelle Henderson. She has worked in education as a teacher, educational diagnostician, and behavior analyst for 30 years. While teaching children with autism, she wrote a book titled A Three-Element Social Skill Program, Instruction, Drama, and Technology. With the knowledge she obtained through her lifelong work with children, she became passionate about helping intuitive of children embrace their gifts. Michelle also shares her innovative ideas with other light workers, giving them direction about supporting families of intuitive children. Enjoy this interview. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Joe. How are you doing? I'm wonderful. How are you today? I am doing fantastic. The sun is shining. It is warming up, so it's a fantastic day. <laughs> Excellent. Where are you located exactly? I'm actually outside of Dallas, Texas. Okay. All right. Great. Um, yeah, I'm here in uh, Kansas City, and it's cold today, but the sun's shining. It's all good. Well, it's nice to meet you. Thank you for taking time out. Oh, absolutely. Well, thank you. I'm excited for our conversation. Me as well. And, and before we get into your life as a author and psychic medium and advisor and educator, all of the things that you do, I want to know, you know, you are definitely in a business that is people-driven and having that human touch. How did you survive COVID? You know, now that we're kind of coming out of it, things are opening up more. <laughs> how did you make it through that two-year period? And how did it subsequently change the way that either you live or you carry on business? Oh, my God. That is an excellent question. Um, right before COVID, I, you know, whenever it sh shut everybody down and we had to go into our homes and everything, I actually came out of the closet, I guess you could say, as a psychic medium, and then I, you know, I was kind of still working for the school district, and when COVID hit, that, you know, I was not able to work for the school district, it slowed me down, and it really made me self-reflect, and I really thought, you know, what do I really want in my life, because there wasn't much else to do besides do puzzles and <laughs> watch TV, so I did a lot of the life reflection. And um, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to sign up for classes so that I can become a better psychic medium to help others. And while I was taking classes online, um, I also went Facebook Live, and I thought, you know what, I can be a light worker. Hopefully, I can make it more positive for everybody. And so I would go on live and try to come up with topics that were inspirational. And I also completed pre readings and I said, you know what? I am here. I am here to help you. You are loved and we're in this together. So I think it really did change the way that I live because I finally decided, you know what? I don't care what others think about me. I've got to live the life, my life as I do and be my unique self. And hopefully I'm, I'm showing everybody that as well. Hopefully I'm being a role model to be, you know, live your life to the fullest. That's wonderful. And, you know, it just illuminates another story that I keep hearing about this pandemic is that, you know, for all of the woe that went into everybody's individual life and even globally for things that happened, there were a lot of silver linings. There were a lot of awakenings. There were a lot of things, like you said, you know, you, you started doing things in a different way, you know. Um, it, I mean, does it seem like that, that it was almost a silver lining for you? Absolutely. And I think, and I talk to others as well, and I think you're just right, right on, you know, you're so right on that. Yeah, so I really felt spiritually awakened. I feel more in tune. And again, it slowed me down because I... I'm a workaholic. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell with everything I've done, but I'm a workaholic. <laughs> and it's yeah. like, I have to do this, I have to do this. I mean, I've had three different jobs. And it's so interesting because I was trying to find happiness in those jobs instead of myself being happy with who I am and what I need to seek out. I was trying to find a job that would make me happy, more organized because my mind was always going. And I wanted to really be helpful in the school system and being, you know, a child's advocate. And 
when the pandemic happened and when I started slowing down, I'm thinking, you know what? I have to go inside myself to find happiness. No one else can make me happy. And and it's almost like I just thought I know what I need to do with the rest of my life. And I talked, you know, of course I have a significant other. But I, talk, I talked to my husband and I said, you know what? I really feel like I need to engage more in being a psychic medium. And he said 100%. You know, he was right with me. He said, I will support you. He said, all I want you from you is to be happy. And ever since I made that difference in my life and the changes in my life, I did. I am so much happier. And things have really slowed down. And, you know, I get up in the morning and I can have my cup of coffee and I don't have to rush. <laughs> and I love it. Absolutely love it. Well, and I think that's the other part of the whole COVID life is that it did slow everybody down, whether they wanted it to or not. You know, we all got to kind of put things in perspective. Um, and, you know, what I find interesting about your profession and being a psychic medium is there's all these professions that exist in the world that you have to train for. You have to, you know, do all kinds of things, that, whether it's a lawyer or a doctor or, you know, anything. Athlete, you got to train yourself. But there's, to me, on the outside looking in, it almost seems as though when you're a psychic medium, it's something that's almost kind of you discover or bestowed upon you, and you, you work on it, but it's something that not everybody can do. It's kind of a select, chosen group of people that get to do this. Um, yeah, and, you know, what other psychic mediums always say is that everybody has the potential to do this, but it may not be on your life pathway to work as a psychic medium. You may use your intuitive, intuitiveness on a daily basis, but you may not choose, you know, to do as far as I've gone. And it is, it is kind of like a calling. It's something I feel like I need to do. And, you know, Spirit was just saying, you got to do this, girl. <laughs> you put us off for so long, it's time for you to do it. And just like being an educator, you're right. You have to be trained. I had to, you know, go to school to become a teacher and also a diagnostician and also a behavior analyst. Um, so I did go back to school three different times, and then I thought, oh, here I'm going back. And being a psychic medium, you do have the, you know, the intuitiveness to really figure things out. But it's like anything else. You have to practice, practice, practice so that you can tune in because it's all in the interpretation. And it's so easy to miss that interpretation. And plus, if you don't really feel confident in what you are doing and um, and you haven't practiced, that's where, you know, the helping others kind of falls apart because then your own anxiety takes over. <laughs> so, but, but, yeah, so I agree with you. Not everybody really does, wants to say yes to spirit and do it full time. But I think at the same time, I think everybody has that intu intuitiveness. And we have to, as humans, to survive. I mean, it's like, okay, I, I know I need to have money to survive. So you've got that kind of intuitiveness. Um, and a lot of people do have some things that come to mind when they're in danger. And sometimes they'll ignore it. But sometimes they'll go, you know what, I better listen to that little inner voice. And yes, you should. <laughs> but a lot of people will get that ego in the mind, in their mind, and they'll go, you know what? That's silly. I'm not going to listen. I'm going to think through logically. So, um, so I just find it very, very fascinating. That's why I love to have this conversation with others because um, I have learned so much since I would start taking classes and learning from other psychic mediums as well and going, you know what? I'm not alone. People are not looking at me like I'm crazy anymore. <laughs> so it is a problem. For sure. So let's kind of simplify all of these different things that you do. You obviously, when you look on paper, you see a lot of things. You said you're a workaholic. So let's just simplify this. And I'm going to put you in front of a bunch of third graders at a career day. And one of the kids looks up at you and says, what do you do for a living? How are you going to answer them? Oh, I absolutely love that. I, you know, I would say, and I would start because I'm 
to say immediately I'm a psychic medium because a lot of that has, you know, they have scary things in movies and a lot of third graders love, you know, scary movies and horror and everything. And I would, I would absolutely say I work for God. I work for, you know, the spiritual world. It's almost like the minister at your church. You know, he get, you know, he, he tells you about Jesus. He tells you um, if you're Christian <laughs> he, or or he gives you a sermon about, you know, spirituality or something about the Bible. I pretty much work with God and I try to heal others um, who ha- are having difficulty in life. You know, they're sad you know, or they want to, you know, talk to a loved one. And so I'm, I'm, a, I'm like a spiritual advisor or I guess third graders would probably understand more if I said a spiritual coach. I'm like a football coach, but I, you know, help people spiritually. And so, you know, a lot of people also tell me that I am a psychic medium. And I said, that's another terminology that we talk about. And I say, you know, I can, as a psychic, I can help people with their lives and give them advice about their life. And as a medium, I can actually connect in with a loved one, like if you have had a grandfather who has passed away, I can talk to your grandfather and hope and get a message from your grandfather to you. So, you know, I just, I love working for God. I love helping people heal, get better if they're sick. And I, and I just love to show them that, yes, there's something different, higher than ourselves. That that are actually helping us along on our pathway in life. So to get to the heart of who you are is someone that you know possesses the skills that you do as a psychic medium, an author, and all of these things that you've done and you continue to do in your life. All of this starts when you're young. Take me back to your childhood and kind of tell me how these seeds were sprinkled and how they've grown and to who you are and what really motivates you to do what you do these days. And I absolutely love this. Okay, so when I was younger, um, I actually, yes, yeah, so I was definitely an empath, which a lot, you know, most psychic mediums are. So I was an empath, and I could feel what my friends were feeling, and I was an emotional wreck, especially, you know, 10 years and up, I would just, you know, come home from school, I'd have to close my door, I'd have to cry, and my mom would go, why are you crying? <laughs> and I'd be going, I don't know. I, I, I'm just so emotional, you know, and I didn't really realize what was going on. And um, and then I could feel different energies a lot of times. I knew I was not alone in, like, my bedroom a lot of times. And I would try to talk to my parents about it, and they would kind of blow it off. You know, oh, that's your imagination, you know, that type of thing. Or as I got older and I started, I just felt like I needed to get more knowledge about what was going on. So I would be the person who would go to, you know, metaphysical section in the bookstore, you know, wearing sunglasses and a hat, (laughs) hiding. And I would find books on this because I'm thinking, there is something that's going on with me, and I don't understand And, you know, then I started hearing voices, and I thought, okay, now I'm really going crazy. But that's when I I contacted a psychic medium, and she said, you're not going crazy. We just need to teach you on how to control what is happening to you. But even as a child, not only did I seek spirituality, I also went to church, and when people would say, you know, God may be angry at you, I'm just going uh, that's not my God. My God is love, is peaceful, and I felt like I had a great relationship with Jesus. And I just didn't, I didn't understand. I'm thinking, I, you know, I don't understand why God would be mad at me for doing something spiritual. And, and then I would also read, you know, self-help books, and I thought, oh, this is just fascinating. And, of course, living in the Dallas area, we had Zig Ziglar. And Zig Ziglar was big on you know, how to be inspired in your life. And I'm just going, oh, he is just totally awesome. So just, you know, hopefully this answers your question. It just kind of was a stepping stone for me to say, you know what? I want to be an inspiration for others. I want to be spiritual. I want to teach people that Jesus is a loving God and not a hateful God, (laughs) that type of thing. 
So, so that's pretty much where it all started. Wonderful. So I'm curious with someone that's as highly driven as you, sometimes we're only as good as the role models and heroes we have in our lives. Who have those been for you? Oh my goodness. That is a wonderful question. Okay. So the role models and of course, and I always like to, you know, I just think it's a great role model. I keep bringing him up, but, but Jesus, you know, was my number one role model. Okay. And then in, Life, um, just people who are so inspirational. Um, there is one person that I want to bring to mind that's really inspirational and a role model for me. Um, and she's a young artist, and she, um, when she does art, she handles into spirit. And to me, the way that I mean, she's drawing, you know, painting. That she was four, and uh, her name. Hopefully, I can say her name justice. <laughs> that Akiana. And she did my favorite picture of Jesus, which is a uh, prayer of peace. And when she channels the spirit, she, I mean, she is engulfed. In, she doesn't eat for two hours while she's painting. And she really gets into what she is doing. And just to me, connecting in that strongly just inspires me. And, of course, people who speak their truth, I always just, I mean, I'm in awe with them when they can get, you know, in front of people and inspire people. And there's so many podcasters that are doing that now and speaking their truth. Yeah, that is the truth. And that's, that's, I think that's one of the beauties of doing podcasting is that it does give everybody a, a chance to kind of find a level of uh, common ground, empathy, figuring things out. I think it's a really good modern therapeutic form of communicating with the, between people. Absolutely, absolutely, and I and I, you know, and I think it is really big right now. I think people are searching for that, and I think there are so many more people that are coming out and going. You know what? I'm going to help them. You know, be inspired. And so I think there's so many more podcasts and so many more inspirational stories that are coming out. And I think also people who have gone through terrible things in their life. They're finally being able to feel, you know, safe and speaking their truth and so that they can help others. Let me ask you this. Let me take this question, this previous question, a step further. If you could meet anybody alive on the planet right now and talk to them, who would it be? Who would you love to meet? You know, I, I still want to go back to Ari, um, if I <laughs> um, Akia. I would definitely want to see her and just to see how when she taps into spirit, you know, what does that look like for her? I would just love to meet her. And she's now in her 20s. Um, but that would be, I think she's such an inspiration for her painting and for her art. So, um, and then um, another person comes to that mind is Brenda Brown. And because she has been such an inspiration for so many people. I think I would love to meet her as well. So every day you get up and you look at what you're going to do with your day between your job and your family and everything in between, what is it that drives you? What is it that you want to get done? Or what is that feeling at the end of the day when you feel like you've done what you were supposed to do that day? What is that like for you? Oh, I love that question. Oh, my gosh. So... I love it whenever I'm able to do uh, psychic or mediumship readings for people. And because it excites me, I think, you know what? I can hear spirit. I'm able to connect in. I'm able to heal. And then, but if I don't have a reading for the day, I do, you know, uh, my job and try to put videos together to inspire people. And then I also like to uh, run errands. So everything I do is very intentional. And if I don't like doing it and I'm going, ugh, I have to do this awful chore, <laughs> you know, because we don't like, love doing everything. But I try to find the gratitude and say, you know what, this is, this is something in my life that I have to do. And I am so grateful for the things that I absolutely love. So I try to turn it around into something more positive and say, okay, what can I do to make it where I enjoy doing it? And so at night, what I love to do is say, you know what, I want to see what I've done 
and what made me a per better person today and who I helped. If I just smiled at somebody in the grocery store and made them smile back, that to me is just such a, uh, a gift and a miracle in itself. So being somebody that's in you know, the business of helping others, you have to give of yourself. How do you balance that? How do you balance you know, giving enough based on what you have to somebody, but also feeding yourself? How does that work for you? Absolutely. And you do have to take care of yourself. And this is really with anybody who are working with people in society and trying to make a big difference. You will get burned out because I did in my previous jobs. But I know whenever my energy starts uh, going down and I'm feeling kind of blah, I have to take time out for myself. So what I normally do is I have a me day. And I know that it's very hard to do, especially if you have a full-time job. But I find an hour, and I spend an hour to myself. And I close the door. I don't turn on any electronics. And I shut the door in peace and quiet. And whenever I did have younger kids, they would know, we're, we're not going to disturb mom. <laughs> or, or she's going to be cranky. So, so, and sometimes meditation, it, I love to meditate because that really slows down my breathing and my mind. Um, so, but you do, I do have to balance it because if I work a holistic fair and I'm doing reading after reading and I do like eight readings during a psychic holistic fair, then I am exhausted the next day. And I just, I clear my calendar and I drink lots of water and I try to um, take care of myself. Again, I try to stay away from technology whenever I am recovering and getting my energy back where it needs to be. So of all the clients and all of the people that you've helped throughout all of the years, what's been your best fan letter, best client response to the work that you've done? Oh my gosh, that is, you know, that is wonderful. Um, I just like them just to say, you know, they always thank me. They go, you know, thank you so much. And it's like, but it's not about me. It's about, you know, connecting to the spiritual world. And so, you know, when I tell them that, they kind of get, <laughs> they're kind of, it's like I'm not, they, they want me to accept their thank you. You know what I'm saying? It's like they're, they're trying to be appreciative and everything else. And that really, you know, that helps me as well. But I think really the client that hugs me at the end and just say, thank you for using your talent um, and your gift from God, that really goes a long way. And it's like, oh, well, thank you. Because that, that tells me, for number one, they were touched in some way and that they were healed. And that should be the number one goal in this job is to really, you know, help them move on, help them feel like they're being guided, and also to give them some hope. You know, the one thing about being on this planet for a while is that you gain a lot of wisdom and you learn a lot of things. And I'm, I'm going to pose a question, which is this. If you have a dream tonight, you run into your 20-year-old version of yourself, and you can take all of the wisdom, advice, and things that you've learned throughout all the years, and that young version asks you, what advice would you give me? What would you give your younger version based on what you've learned throughout your life? I would definitely say, you know what? You are very special. Don't let anybody make you feel otherwise. Speak your truth. Be your unique self. If something does not make you feel happy or spiritual, or, you know, or just feeling like yourself, don't do it. Learn to say no and do not be a people pleaser. <laughs> I know that's a lot of advice, but being a people pleaser in the very beginning, I was 100% there and I had to learn not to be a people pleaser so that I could live the life that I wanted to live. For people that are skeptics, if there's anybody that's skeptical about the other side and what you do, how do you convince them to relax their mind and to open up to the possibilities and, and make sure that they understand what you're doing? Oh, I like, um, okay, so so whenever I come into contact, and that does happen a lot, you know, they're kind of like, I don't know, you know, I don't know if I really believe in it. And so 
the number one thing they should not ask for a rating when they're very skeptical because they're not going to be able to get that message. They're going to be so skeptical. They're going, uh-uh. And so what I always tell them, I always say, you know what? Everybody believes in different things. And it is okay not to believe. And there are some, you know, psychic mediums that you need to be skeptical of like anything else. I mean, there are doctors out there that are horrible. There are doctors that are fantastic. Um, but you may not be in a place in your life where you need to go to a psychic medium for readings. And it's okay if you don't believe um, because everybody is on a different spiritual journey. And but don't um, don't use your opinion or look down on what psychic mediums do because they do make a huge difference. And um, but don't run it for others if you don't believe. So just live the life that you need to live and um, not be so skeptical and don't look for things because a psychic medium is not going to be a hundred percent correct. A lot of people think. If you miss an interpretation, then it's totally wrong. No one is 100%. And a lot of times when you watch a psychic medium on TV, they cut out the parts where they are wrong, you know, in the interpretation. But spirit always gives people the message that they need at that time or the information that a psychic medium receives. So, but if you're not ready to receive that, then you should not, you know, pursue having a reading, but also don't stop others who want to. So everyone out there has a perception of you, an idea of who they think you are, your family, your friends, your clients, the readers of your book, um, but ultimately you live your life. You have a perception of you. Who do you think you are? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I think I am my biggest skeptic. <laughs> I love that. So, um, yeah, so, you know, I'm still finding things out about myself. I, you know, some days I'm a different person. You know, I have different feelings. I have different perspectives. And then something happens in my life that changes those perspectives and changes me as a person. So like what we were talking about, my 20-year-old self, is a completely different person than what I am now. So what what I'm trying to do now is just uh, follow my pathway as I need to and be happy. And I hope that others see me in that way. Because I know um, a lot of times my husband will call me a leader. And I don't really see myself as a leader. Um, I see myself as just kind of following the pathway, my intuitiveness, what I need to do needs to get done. Um, so I just hope that I'm a big inspiration for others. And so that's the number one thing I hope others see me as, as an inspiration. Wonderful, Michelle. Hey, let's get down to the good business here. If anybody wants to get your book, if anybody wants to hire you for your services, learn more about you, anything revolving around your, your world, where's the best place for them to go? The number of one place I tell everybody to go to is my website uh, that has all the information is www.michellehendersonmedium.com. Excellent, Michelle. This has been wonderful. Thank you for opening up. Thank you for your time. Good luck with everything. Have a great holiday. Oh, well, you too. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in to another famous interview with Joe Domino, where we cover the world of art, literature, spirituality, and music from around the globe. Visit the Famous Interviews with Joe Domino channel on YouTube. Thanks again for listening, and until next time. Mm -hmm.